Hello everyone! Welcome back to Remembering the Razzies. This week we watched... Lonely Lady. It was great. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. Oh boy. How would you describe this movie? What's the logline for this movie? very complicated. <laughs> well, I guess we could summarize it the way that she does. An 18-year-old high school student fucks her way to the top of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Once you get to the end of the movie, and yeah. it all boils down to her speech at the end, where she does say she had to fuck her way to the top, then you're like, okay, now it I had a the point. point. Yeah. yeah. It's a movie that tries to do something good, but I feel like it's very problematic in the ways that it tries to do it. It doesn't make it clear that that is going to be the point of the movie until the end. So. Until like the last 30 minutes. Right. Oh, so boy. yeah, do you want to try to talk through the plot? Or <sighs> She starts off... The, I don't even know what the girl's name was. Me either. I, <laughs> she's the main character. She's a high schooler, mm -hmm. and she wins a creative writing award at what we thought was a real award ceremony, and then it was in high school. Yeah, that was weird. She goes to an after party, meets Ray Liotta, who you may know from critically acclaimed B-movie. Or Wild Hogs. Or Wild Hogs. Those are the only Obviously, two movies yeah. I can think of Ray Liotta being in. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And then he randomly sexually assaults her well here let's i want to we missed yeah, a couple things first go into it so they go to this high school party uh and then uh they they i guess ray leota uh <laughs> you see after the award ceremony they go to this high school party where her i guess either boyfriend or friend it's not really clear it's not clear because you don't see them really interact very much. It's like, hey, let's go back to my dad's house. My dad is a famous movie director. Uh, and let's just hang out. And Ray Liotta and his girlfriend are like, cool, we'll go too. And then on the car right there, <laughs> Ray Liotta and her, his girlfriend are sitting in the back seat and they're just making out. And the, the main character, Jerry Lee, and her friend are just sitting in the front seat driving and just like staring straight ahead as these two people are fucking in back of them. It starts out the their very fun trend of this movie, which is very slow blowjob uh, position taking, where a guy will take a woman's head and literally just like so slowly move her head down. This movie was softcore porn. I don't even know if I'd call it softcore. It's like... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was softcore porn. There's a good, maybe, like, ten minutes of sex in this movie. So then they get to Walt's house, the boyfriend, not boyfriend. Ray Liotta sexually assaults her with a garden hose. Which I didn't know what it was until it comes back later. Yeah, so then Jacob and I think, okay, this is gonna be a movie about her overcoming her trauma. And it's not. The sexual assault doesn't come up until they're fighting and he brings it up. Yeah, no, it's super fucked up. So, and it is fucked up. Uh, next scene, they say like, yep, the guy who sexually assaulted you, uh, he's now in London yeah. at his mom's house. Uh, also, uh, your friend's dad is here. Just wanted to talk to you for a little bit. And they immediately fall in love and get married. It's super it's weird. It's really quick. From the point where she's sexually assaulted to that next day must be like maximum a week. Right after that scene, they have like a cute little love montage, which is really weird because she's 18 and he's like 50. And then yeah. the ne uh, then it goes to a scene where she's talking to her mom and she's like, I want to be in bed with that guy. And she's like, no. And then the next scene is they're married. They're married. Yeah. yeah. This is in the span of like five minutes. <laughs> it, it goes so fast. This movie's only an hour and a half and it felt like... It felt like there were three movies in it. There's so many characters. Every Almost every scene uh, introduces a new character, and they all mm -hmm. look the same, uh, at least with the quality we were watching with. Uh, yeah. Because it's an old movie. And this movie was harder to find than Inchon was. And Inchon was an, a direct-to-TV movie. Yeah. This showed in the theaters. So she becomes a screenwriter. Yes, she, she wants to sell her script. So she's married to this Walter guy, mm. and she changes one word in his screenplay, and he's like, I want to divorce you. <laughs> you do not touch my script. They get into the big fight that causes them to divorce, uh, and they're outside where her sexual assault happened, which is their house. And we point out, it's yeah. weird that they kept the house. Come uh, and marry me and live in the place where your life was ruined yeah. almost. And then he I picks know. up the hose, which is shaped like a dildo. I don't know what that attachment yeah, is, but it's, it's really interesting. Oh, 
And he's like, what, you like this more? And, and she's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then a lot of things happen after that, which I can't even remember the chronological order. Of. There's a great, she finds out that she's being taken advantage of by men in Hollywood, and she has a breakdown and goes to like a facility. And then there's this really awful montage of her getting better. And it's like in a montage, you think that scenes are like really quick. Yeah, really like quick. Like maybe five seconds. Sometimes set to music. Most of the time set to music. Yeah. This one, like the scenes varied between like a five second scene or a 30 second scene. The music wavered in and out throughout the whole thing. We thought the montage was done. Multiple times. Multiple times. A scene would start and then it would cut to more montage-y stuff. It, it, it's baffling. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Uh, kind of justifies a little bit of what happened in the movie. Basically she wins an award which wasn't an Oscar. It was like, I, I compare it to, it seemed like a Writers Guild Award maybe. Yeah, a very, very prestigious award in Hollywood. Yeah. She's like, I know I should be thanking everyone, but uh, there's not many people to thank because I fucked my way to the top. And everyone's like, What's Yeah, she's talk? like, I can't thank you for as much as you gave because you took more. Right. Or something like that. Everybody boos her. It's really shitty. This movie points out like really real problems in Hollywood that right. we're dealing with today. It's just bad at it. And if this movie would have like been made differently, maybe right. it could have started that movement then. I stick to the idea that if they had given any indication of this is where this is how it's going to end where like she's just gonna be like fuck everyone yeah. who wronged me in hollywood like it would have been better but the whole movie she's so like naive and like mm -hmm. she's like i just want to fall in love and i want to sell my script and like she doesn't have enough agency i guess where like at the end like she's the one in charge she's the one saying fuck you guys i'm the one in mm -hmm. charge but throughout the whole movie it's like well, they're just using her and she's just kind of going with it and like it's ruining her yeah. life. I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this that doesn't feel like a victim blaming kind of thing because this is do this is what happens. Right. There are people who, there are women who want to make their way in Hollywood right. and they are taken advantage by the men in power. This is a real problem. Right. It's just... This didn't handle it well. It didn't handle it well at all. Like we said, the sexual assault happens and it's just like never brought up again. Right. They're, they're just like, all right. That's a very important thing that happened. But let's move on to something else that can also be important that happens. And I was gonna say like, it doesn't compound, like it doesn't stay with her, but the, I guess she does have like a mental break in the middle. She does, yeah. But like, it's not even necessary, it's not even because of her sexual assaults really, it's because she thought that she was gonna have sex and sell her script and it didn't sell, they just had sex with her and yeah. then she has the mental break. So it's, it's, it's hard to shit on a movie, because the movie is bad, but like agree with where it went. Yeah, like it, it ended in a good, good spot. Yeah. Thematically. Yeah. But building up to that, it just didn't feel earned, I you, guess. Yeah, exactly. You don't want a movie that says it's moral at the end without any, it's not really a payoff yeah. if they just kind of put it in the end scene. Right. Yes, we, we agree with the message it was telling, yeah. but we just don't agree with the way it told the message. Yes. Which, I mean, overall, it sounds like we're, we are saying that, I don't know, cause, yeah, you're right. It's so hard to critique this it's, movie. It's like a touchy subject, so you don't yeah. want to... It's a, it's a very touchy subject that they did not handle well. At all. <laughs> yeah, but because it has a good message it's hard to say it's a bad movie because then it seems like we're not agreeing with the message. Yeah. I think you can agree with the message and call it a bad movie. It's like Mommy Dearest, I agree that child abuse is horrible and Joan Crawford was a horrible person, but that movie yeah, it's a stunk. Terrible movie, right. I think the village people have like good a songs good. if you're in the mood. <laughs> a good song. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that we do YMCA at your wedding. <laughs> no, we're going to do the milkshake at your wedding. Oh, boy. <laughs> this movie was nominated for 11 Razzies. Won six. This was nominated for Worst of the Decade. We'll get to ranking in a little bit. Sure, yeah. This won Worst Musical Score, Worst Original Song, Worst Screenplay, Worst Actress, Director, and Picture. We mentioned in a post credit scene last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, um, how can you tell that it's a worst score? 
and I think we found out beyond just the music sucking, which it did. It's it's laughably bad, but it's mixed really bad too. Oh, like yeah. anytime there's a scene with music, like you can't hear anything that the characters are saying. Mm -hmm. It fades in and out. It's just it's rough. It opens up with the song that was nominated but didn't win. The song that won was called "The Way You Do It," which we can't find on YouTube, Spotify, nothing. Doesn't exist. There's another song called "Lonely Lady." It's, yeah, it's really funny. It's like, if you can picture a guy holding, oh, Will's coming. <laughs> What's up, man? Am I too early? No, we're just, <laughs> we're just running a little late. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy who sings it, uh, when I picture the guy singing it, it's like a guy in a bedazzled jacket with like a very long, skinny microphone, and he's like greeting the girls as they come on stage. That's what it sounds like. To the like. song Lonely Lady? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like one of those Miss America pageants where he's like, this is Miss America. She's very depressed. The Lonely Lady. And like, she's just... Worst screenplay. We've already talked about this. Yeah, the writing sucks. Honestly, I think the writing is the worst part. I would agree. Like I said, felt like four movies. And if the writing was better, maybe the message would have been right. Yeah. Better to come across. Worst actress. Pia Sidora. If I had, if I had seen more of these nominated movies, I would know how to judge it. But I don't. I don't think she was awful. I think everyone in the film was like campy 80s acting but yeah. she seemed she seemed like the best one in the film and most of the actors especially blurred together for me yeah and she she was fine i'm not gonna remember her performance uh then worst director and worst picture yeah the director sucked it felt like a very generic bad 80s movie yeah to me like nothing special but not really memorable in any way so this was nominated against two of a kind Stroker Ace, Jaws 3D, and Hercules. I would say we're, this is worst picture worthy. Yeah, for sure. If if you cut out the last scene, this movie is really terrible. Yes. And again, that last scene is not a great saving grace, but it is a mild saving grace. It, it made me, yeah, it made us realize right, <laughs> what that, the movie's about. Yeah, it was painful getting to that point. Yeah. Funny. In a like not not that they intended it to be funny. This is the first one that I've seen where like there's enough campiness to where I'm like I could see how this could become a cult classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely there's <laughs> all the guys. Anytime you see an older gentleman with his wife, he insults her in some way. Oh my god, this movie's savage as hell. <laughs> this wife is like, you know, if I was ugly, I would kill myself. And <laughs> the husband just turns to her. And it's like, what do you mean if? And then they just walk <laughs> off, and it's like, whoa, dude, that's. <laughs> Why don't you buy me a dress like that? <laughs> Why don't you look like that? Oh yeah, when she's trying to sell her script and like has to make a hard decision on whether to not sell her script because uh, a guy who was going to be in the film for her script she had a bad past with, so uh, she could either decide to not sell it or just sell it anyway. Mm -hmm. The guy who's trying to convince her to sell it says, Hey look kid, you're not in the movies yet, so wise up. You've already had one abortion, sweetheart. Don't make it two. Bro, you're at brunch right now. <laughs> you can't just use her abortion to make her sell a script. It's super fucked up. Everyone's so mean. Everyone's so mean to her. At least the guy that she married wasn't Ray Liotta's dad like we thought. That's true, yeah. We, that was so much worse. Through, through a lot of the movie, we thought that the old guy who married her was the rapist's father, which makes it so much worse. So much worse. Yeah. Uh, luckily, it's not that, but it's still... Weird. But they still lived at the house that it happened. Yeah, they still he, kept the hose attachment. It's it's just an odd series of events. <sighs> All um, right. Well, we want to rank this? Yeah, let's rank it. So, okay. we're ranking it on objectively good film, and did we enjoy it? Yeah. I would put this maybe under Can't Stop the Music, but above Inchon. Where's Mommy Dearest? Because we said there? Mommy Dearest was at the top. Oh. For like, best, sure. for best made. Because Can't Stop the Music, at least, even though the narrative was everywhere, it was more cohesive than this. That's true. We knew what was going to happen by the end. I knew more than one character's name. That's true. Uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, tier list. Um, and then entertainment-wise, it's 
above Mommy Dearest. Oh, hell it's yeah. above Incon. Incon. Incon's below Mommy Dearest. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Incon, Mommy Dearest. I had more fun watching Can't Stop the Music. Me too. There's nothing problematic I, in it. Yeah, I laughed a lot more yeah. during Can't Stop the Music. So, okay. tier list. <laughs> All right. What are we Great. watching next week? Next week, for our fifth Golden Raspberries, we're watching Bolero. I have never heard of How Bolero. How do Cannibal Run 2? It's the good place. Oh, that is the good place. Oh, we got Bo Derek. It's a horse girl movie. <laughs> it's about sexual awakening and it's a horse girl movie. This is Yes! You're finally gonna live your dream. Oh my god. The film centers on the protagonist's sexual awakening and her journey around the world to pursue an ideal first lover who will take her virginity. I don't like how there's a horse on the poster. I do though! <laughs> <laughs>